Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, we're here today to really talk about Nebraska's second house to the legislature. Um, Nebraska is the only state in the country with a unicameral legislature, but it has always been known as an initiative and referendum state, and the initiative and referendum process is that second house. And we're here today to talk about court cases, uh, to talk about the initiative petition process, but mainly to talk about how we solve a very serious problem. And that problem is that Nebraska's second house, the people's house, the initiative and referendum process, has been crushed and destroyed for all practical purposes by the first house, the unicameral legislature. And this has been done by passing unconstitutional restrictions on the process. That's why today in federal court uh, there was a, a trial and we don't know what the outcome will be, but ultimately we believe that these restrictions will be struck down. The case is Citizens in Charge versus Gale. Uh, and standing here with me is Kent Bernbeck who has a, a, another lawsuit against some of the same provisions and some other provisions that are also unconstitutional uh, in federal court as well. We want to discuss a little bit about these court cases, but we also want to talk about changing this situation, not just by winning these court cases, but also by changing the process and convincing the legislature to let the people of Nebraska speak out. And uh, to do that, is going to require more than simply winning these court cases. It's going to require political action, getting people together, and uh, we are here today to announce the formation of a citizen task force. Uh, Citizens in Charge is sponsoring the citizen task force. Ken Bernbeck, who is a longtime activist on democracy issues and initiative and referendum, uh, and making sure that the little guy can participate in politics just like the big guy. Uh, we'll be heading up the task force and between now and the next legislative session uh, that task force will be providing information to the legislature on the best ways to reform the process so that every Nebraskan can have a shot. If they believe that they have a better way uh, to do something, if there's a new law, a new reform that needs to be made, they have a way to bring it to the ballot box and to bring it to their neighbors and let's make a decision at the, at the election. Citizens in Charge versus Gale challenge three basic parts of the petition law here. The first and most important is a ban on non-resident circulators. Uh, in politics in this state, if you want to hire a lobbyist, if you want to hire a campaign manager, if you want to hire an advertising man, uh, any position under the sun, they can be from anywhere in the U.S. or overseas. But if you want to hire a circulator to carry your petition from door to door or at the supermarket to put an issue on the ballot, they have to be a Nebraska resident. Nebraska has the lowest unemployment in the country and it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to get a measure on the ballot without using paid circulators. And if you're going to use paid circulators, you want to use professionals, people who know how to do it. Uh, and that, for all practical purposes, has been outlawed in Nebraska. In the last two years, three federal circuits have ruled on similar laws in other states, in Arizona, in Ohio, and in Oklahoma. In each case, three to nothing, the circuit courts struck down residency requirements just like Nebraska's law. We are confident, though, in the Eighth Circuit, it, this case could go all the way to the Supreme Court before it's decided. But ultimately, this case will be decided, and I am confident it will be decided by striking down Nebraska's unconstitutional residency requirement. We also are challenging what we call the scarlet letter provision. On petitions in Nebraska, it's the only state in the country that does this, you are required, if you use a paid circulator, to put this petition circulated by a paid circulator in 16-point type, bigger than anything else on the petition, and in red ink, 
so that that's the main thing that people want to talk about as you're collecting signatures rather than the issue that causes people to go out and, and seek out their, their friends and neighbors to sign a petition. That is something that, again, we think will be struck down. The third provision we challenged in Citizens in Charge versus Gale is a distribution requirement for third party or minor party petitions and independent candidate petitions. That has already been changed by the legislature. Congratulations to the legislature for doing so. And is now a moot point because we, we have it in a, now in a way that is constitutional instead of the old way, which was clearly not constitutional. Now, oftentimes people can talk about constitutional. The court will sort it out in the end and we'll find out. But this residency requirement has been struck down all over the country. It was put in place to make it more difficult for Nebraska citizens to put measures on the ballot. Nebraska citizens have a fundamental right to petition their government and to put an issue on the ballot. And for the legislature to pass laws that they should have known were unconstitutional, but certainly did know would make the process more difficult is simply wrong. Their job is to facilitate our constitutional rights, to protect our constitutional rights, not to attempt to take them away. And even when we prevail in this lawsuit, which I'm convinced we will, if we don't prevail at the district level, we'll prevail at the Eighth Circuit. If we don't prevail at the Eighth Circuit, I'm convinced this case will go all the way to the Supreme Court. Ultimately, we will win. But the sad fact of the matter is, even when the courts strike down this law as unconstitutional, the people of Nebraska will have been denied those constitutional rights for years. This law was passed three years ago. By the time it's ultimately decided, what will it be, four years or five years or six years, that the people of Nebraska don't have their fundamental First Amendment rights to petition their government? That is wrong. And it needs to not only be stopped in court, it needs to be stopped in the court of public opinion, and it needs to be changed in the legislature. Now, one reason that this is such a serious problem in Nebraska is also because your petition process has been hijacked years ago by a, a court case. The Dugan case from 1994 ruled that a, an amendment passed by the voters of Nebraska, which they had no idea was would have this effect. In fact, even the author of the amendment said publicly that that was not his intention. But in striking down the first term limits law that was passed by initiative here, the court ruled that you had to get 10% of registered voters to put a measure on the ballot instead of 10% of the vote for governor. Well, that's almost a doubling of the requirement. And that has made it to where very few measures qualified anyway. But since this law, this new residency requirement, was put in place in 2008, and it has with it, which Kent will talk about here in a minute, a ban on paying people on a per-signature basis, which of course is the only sensible way that you would pay somebody in this type of work, since that time not a single initiative, statutory or a constitutional amendment, has even attempted to make the ballot. No one has turned in signatures for a single initiative measure in the three years since this law has been on the books. For all practical purposes, they have murdered the initiative process in Nebraska. And it happened in the legislature, and it needs to be changed not just in court, it needs to be changed in the legislature. And one of the things we're calling on legislators to do, and if they don't do it, then I think the people of Nebraska through the initiative process will ultimately have to do it, and that is to return the petition process to the way it was before the Dugan decision. Lower this signature requirement from 10% of the registered voters to a much lower figure, either 10% of, of the vote for governor or lower it to 8% or 7% uh, of registered voters or even 5% of registered voters. But the people of Nebraska have a right to use this process. And uh, it's time that that right was not just recognized in federal court, but was also recognized in the legislature.